Well, I guess I can officially say it, folks. Merry Christmas. Um, after this short little uh, dive into a, a very cool little piece of the Christmas story, uh, I think we'll, we'll just uh, wish you a very Merry Christmas. And for the next couple of weeks, we'll see you on, Saturday, on, on Sundays. Why, why would we see you on Saturdays? Um, someday soon, we'll be able to gather for fellowship again, and uh, then we will see each other on more Saturdays. Uh, for the next couple of weeks, there won't be Wednesday nights. I want you to spend extra time with your family. Remember to be safe about how you gather. If you do gather, uh, consider the, whether that's the right decision for you and, and, and those you love. But um, remember that we are still meeting on Sundays, and I encourage you to, we say keep Christ in Christmas. Well, let's keep him at the center of our celebrations, and let's do gather when the church is, is gathering. So I encourage you to join us um, on Sundays, but take a couple of weeks here and rest on Wednesday nights and be with the ones you love and get ready for the holiday. And so I just want to read a, a, a quick portion tonight um, and just say a very few words about it. And I want to set it up. I want to set up where we're going with a reading from Galatians 4. Um, and, and so tonight after the last class goes off, uh, we're in rest mode. And so just bear with me for just a few moments while we, while we look at the Christmas story from a different cut of the diamond. Galatians 4, but when the fullness of the time came, God sent his son. This is Galatians 4.4. 4. When the fullness of the time came, that is the time of David's covenant, the time of waiting for the Messiah, God sent his son, born of a woman, born of a woman, born under the law, so that he might redeem those who were under the law, that we might receive the adoption as sons and daughters. Because you are sons, God has sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, crying out, Abba, Father, the spirit cries out from within us. Therefore, you are no longer a slave, but a son. And if a son, then an heir through God. And that's such a beautiful, that picture of the continuing of the incarnation in the Lord's church and through his church in a very real way. God continues to come in flesh through his church, through the spirit of his son in us. Um, in that beautiful way this Galatians verse sets us up to look at the Christmas story uh, through a different lens than typical. I'm going to Revelation 12. Revelation 12. Now, we've just read about how the Spirit of Christ gives us adoption as sons and daughters. And Revelation uh, it really, the drama of it begins to greatly unfold uh, the Lord told John, write the things you have seen. He, that was Christ in his glory and his glorified state. Write the things you have seen and the things that are. That was the letters to the churches and the things that are to come after these things. Now, when you get into the things that are to come after these things, the final drama of human history, um, the, the, that opens with a great scroll and only one found worthy to open it, the Lamb that takes away the sins of the world, and that scroll is sealed with seven seals. And we can basically know from that 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 scroll is a last will and testament because a last will and testament was the only um, kind of document in the ancient Near East that was uh, sealed with seven seals. And the only one worthy to open it is whoever is the, the receiver of the will, whoever is the beneficiary. So what is that will and testament? It is God's decision to vest the fullness of the title deed and the, the kingdom of ruling over creation in Jesus Christ. We were given that inheritance. We lost it. 
Christ had to come and win it back from the grips of Satan for us. And so it is now his, but by adoption, we get to share in it with him when he returns to reign. Revelation 12 tells the story this way. A great sign appeared in heaven. So the the seven seals have been opened and the seventh seal set off seven trumpets. And the seven trumpets have been uh, have blown and the seventh trumpet set off this whole drama, the 144,000 that have kept themselves pure, the, the two witnesses, all these things are, are going on. And here a great, suddenly a great sign appears in heaven. The, these, these dramatic occurrences are showing us a picture of God's plan, his final plan. A woman clothed with the sun, that's the glory of God. She's clothed with the glory of God. And the moon under her feet. Now this this reminds us of of several things. Uh, On her head, a crown of 12 stars. This imagery starts to remind us of of her. the, The woman is starting to sound a little bit like the bride of Christ. She's ruling over the authority of the air and, and even over Satan's area of dominion at this time. There's somebody that has a greater right to it and a crown of 12 stars. That reminds us of the 12 tribes and it reminds us of Joseph's vision where he said the sun, the moon, and the stars bowed down to me. And, and, and she was pregnant and she cried out being in labor and in pain to give birth. Then another sign appeared in heaven and behold a great red dragon having seven heads and ten horns and on his heads were seven crowns and his tail swept away of the third of the stars of heaven and hurled them down to earth. Oh, hold on a second. You start to understand a little bit about that great red dragon right there because who has swept a third of the stars out of heaven with his, with his tail but Satan, Lucifer, the, the great adversary from the beginning. The, the image here is of a great red dragon because that is who has motivated every attack against God's people throughout history. It's a miracle, speaking of God's earthly people, the sand kingdom, it's a miracle that the Jewish people continue to survive in any form to this day. They have been tried to be killed out more than any other race possibly or ethnicity in in the history of the world and yet they are still here there's only one explanation it's not their might it's not their power there not been enough of them and they have not had enough power and ability they have been preserved and it is the same with the lord's church they're the only reason that we have continued to survive and thrive despite every opposition and every attempt to destroy us, which has always been there, has been the sustaining hand of God. And so this great red dragon is pretty intimidating and he stood, the dragon stood before the woman who was about to give birth so that when he gave birth, he, she gave birth, he might devour her child. Remember, we've been talking about Herod the last couple of weeks. We've made several mentions to him. I, I want you to understand that Herod's just a placeholder. He's, he's just a puppet. Herod just represents. In fact, Herod was doomed to only represent other authorities. In, in his uh, kingdom, he represented the authority of Rome. He wasn't even his own man. He was a bought man. But what he probably didn't know was that just like Rome, he was owned by the great red dragon and that even Rome wasn't an autonomous kingdom. There's always been one force motivating the attempt to destroy the child. The child, I want to devour the child. And 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 there's just one being that has an interest in seeing to it that Christ is not brought successfully to the world. And she gave birth to a son a male who is going to rule all the nations with a rod of iron. And her child was caught up to God and his throne. You see how we understand now very clearly, this woman really represents Israel, the the natural people that were to bring the Messiah to birth. 
And then the woman fled into the wilderness where she had a place prepared by God so that there she would be nourished for 1,260 days. This is the Christmas story in the book of Revelation. And there was war in heaven, Michael and his angels waging war with the dragon. And the dragon and his angels waged war and they did not prevail and there was no longer a place found for them in heaven. And the great dragon was thrown down, the serpent of old who is called the devil and Satan who deceives the whole world. He was thrown down to the earth and his angels were thrown down with him. Then I heard a loud voice in heaven saying, Now the salvation and the power and the kingdom of our God and the authority of his Christ have come. For the accuser of our brothers and sisters has been thrown down, the one who accuses them before our God day and night. And they overcame him because of the blood of the lamb and because of the word of their testimony. And they did not love their life even when faced with death. For this reason, rejoice, you heavens and you who dwell in them. Woe to the earth and the sea, because the devil has come down to you with great wrath, knowing that he has only a short time. And so immediately when the dragon is thrown to the earth here, uh, he persecuted the woman who gave birth to the male child. So he goes into attack mode against Israel again. But God carries the woman on his wings. It says the wings of the eagle were given to the woman. And that imagery is from when God said by the Old Testament prophets, I carried you up out of Egypt on wings of an eagle. And she flies into the wilderness and she's nourished again for a a certain season of time, a time, times, and half a time, three and a half years. And the serpent is, is furious and he, he spews water at her to, to try to drown her. Uh, but, but the earth opens up its mouth and swallows the water. This is divine protection. God seeing to her. But the earth helped the woman and opened its mouth and drank up the river. Uh, verse 17, so the dragon was enraged with the woman and went off to make war with the rest of her children who keep the commandments of God and hold to the testimony of Jesus. This reminds us so much. Last week we looked where Herod said, tell me exactly when the sign of his appearing occurred. And later he went back and he he brutally murdered all of the male children born in Judea within the last two years. And that was because of when the sign had appeared. And, and Herod here is again acting out his role as an emissary of the great dragon. And, and so we, we need to understand every time we read uh, these stories of, of Christmas that the actors in them are, are fulfilling destinies given to them by higher powers, whether the God of this world or God Almighty. And now in our time, so we've looked at the past, the birth of Jesus, then we've gone into the future and looked at that from the the view of, of John the Revelator. And what we are able to see as a continual theme is God will always provide a way of escape. I want you to know in this season of time, The dragon is still standing before the woman, hoping to to destroy the child as soon as he sees it. And that happens in the natural and it happens in the spiritual. And as soon as we begin to bring to birth what God has given us to do as we manifest Christ in this time, as we are the incarnation in this moment until we see him face to face again, There's always that fire-breathing dragon. There's always that Herod. There's always the religious systems and the political systems that want to come against us and attack us. But I want you to remember that our source and our help and our sustenance come from the Lord. Politics will not solve this. No, No war we can wage in the natural will solve this until he appears at the head of his own army to lead us into battle. Our help comes from the Lord. And so I want to encourage you as we go into Christmas, don't go in to this season with a defensive posture and, and no, go in understanding the dragon has always wanted to destroy the child. There has always been a Herod to arrive every time that the, the, the 
Messiah is being manifested in the earth. Every time there's been a, a mighty revival, every time there's been an outpouring, every time there has been a changing of the seasons in the kingdom, the dragon has been there in some form looking to gobble it up, but he will not win. The God of heaven's armies is our help. If he, th if he tries to drown us in water, the earth will open up and drink the water. If he tries to kill us with fire, we'll walk through the fire unharmed. We are representatives of Christ and his true kingdom in the earth. For right now, until he returns, the kingdom is within us. And so whether you want to call him the great red dragon or you want to call him Herod or you want to call him uh, any form of, of opposition we may see in this a modern world against God in his church, just know he has seen it from the beginning. He has seen the end from the beginning. He has already made a way. He has already prepared a place. He has already provided the wings of the eagle. And every time the enemy tries to devour the child, he will be confounded. So as we go into just a few moments of, of worship together, just to wrap up the year, I told you it'd be a short session and I don't want to take your time. I want you to get off with your family and, and enjoy this season. And I want you to go to one last class and then kind of shut the computers down for a while. And But in just the next few moments while we worship the newborn King together, remember God is our help. He is our source. He is our hope. Herod is not greater. He's great, but he's not greater. The dragon will not be able to devour the child. Not then, not now, not ever. So Father, we thank you for it. We receive your promises that are always yes and amen in Jesus Christ. Thank you for the incarnation. Thank you for coming to earth and thank you for your promise to return and thank you for your presence among us, incarnating yourself in the corporate body until you do return. And we receive that gift with joy and we give our gifts in worship just as the wise men did. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. The Lord make his face to shine on you. The Lord be gracious to you and give you peace. Worship with us for the next few moments and then we'll let this feed go down. You can jump in a class and then wind it down for the year. Merry Christmas. We love you. Oh.
Love. 